Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Jim, and I live in Livingston, Montana. Say, I thought I would do a second part to a vi another video that I recorded today, which is New Year's Day of 2023, concerning bugling elk with a harmonica. <laughs> I still can't believe I'm really actually doing this, but a harmonica makes an excellent in instrument to... Talk to big game animals, small game animals, just animal, just wildlife and period, okay? But I thought I had better straighten out a few things because I got to go in strong here. I got to go in stout and forgot about safety because there is a safety factor involved with these elk. Now, elk only go into rut and they only go into this crazy bugling that they do mostly in the month of September. You can go around all different types of the times of the year, January, February, July, August, and and blast your lungs out with a harmonica and you're probably not going to get one single elk to, to answer you. The best month is when they're in rut and that's September. Okay, I, I, I didn't make that clear. In, in my other video because I was too busy blabbering about other things. But for safety purposes, I figured I better get back on here and, and say a few things because I've been messing around with elk for a lot of years. Probably doesn't look like I know what I'm talking about, but you can rush your rear end that I do, you know. Okay, when you stir up a bull elk with a bugle, sometimes they get very violent. Sometimes they'll come into you you come over to where you're at or whatever have you, it, you know, more out of curiosity than anything because what it is, the, the bugling of two elk, is a, of two bulls, is a challenge to see who gets to run off with the cows, to see who gets to run off with the hair of the cows. That, that's the truth. So what happens is, depending on the bull, you can get them really worked up. And they can become very dangerous. They can, you know, you could draw a bull elk in. And if the circumstances were all wrong, not in your favor, that bull elk could charge you and pin you to a tree. Pin you to the ground or whatever have you. So, but all you got to do is just jump up in the air and, and scream and holler. And that, that bull more than likely is going to take off. It's not like you're dealing with a grizzly bear, but yet... There is a safety factor. I just couldn't live with myself unless I made a movie file and cleared this part up. You know, and that's another thing too. When you're dealing with these elk, it, to successfully get a look at one or draw one up to you, you got to pay attention to the wind. You got you got to be downwind to that elk. You know, and there's several ways you can do that. You can carry a little plastic bottle of baby powder, you can squeeze it in the air, see which way the wind's blowing, you can hang a feather off your camera, there's all kinds of things you can do for wind detection, but you need to be downwind to that elk, because if he gets wind to you, game over, show over, he's out of there, you know, but that's the only way you're going to get good, is if you go out into mother nature, and you start squeaking at these elk, it's just that simple. You know, and it's not that big of a deal. I tried to make it as simple as I could, you know, which I'm going to do this again. I'm bound determined to to make my mark here, so to speak, with this with this calling of uh, wildlife. And like I was say, trying to say in my other video, this business of harmonicas doesn't just apply to elk. I mean, you can you can call in. Coyotes, for example, by pretending you're a w wounded rabbit. You can call in birds of prey by going around their nesting areas and start squawking at them, you know. And matter of fact, uh, uh, a bird of prey sounds something like this. I, I don't think I can do this quite right. But that's the key, to get out in the woods and practice. Listen to these g big game animals, these this wildlife Listen to them and try to duplicate them, try to mimic them, and the next thing you know, you're going to have a, a a whole orchestra of animals around you. I think I, in fact, in my YouTube index somewhere, I do believe I've done a movie file along these lines, bugling up 
animals with a with a harmonica. But when it comes to birds of prey, they, they make a, a real high piercing sound. Pew! 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 Oops. <laughs> yeah, get it right, Jim. There, I had a, my harmonica backwards. There, that right there. I need to, I need to carry that note out a little bit further. But that's that's what a bird of prey sounds like. I know a place up here on Livingston Peak that's got a big clip interface that's full of nesting falcons and eagles and stuff like that. You can go up there and talk to them all day long. That's fact. Yeah, and then like, okay, you take like a coyote, for example. Just pretend like you're a wounded rabbit, and everything being equal, that coyote should come into you. That's about what a wound, wounded rabbit uh, sounds like, something like that. Also, there's one thing I want, one thing I forgot to mention about this Honer Rocket Harp. This thing is built a little bit stouter than your normal harps, and that's another reason why I've selected this. The reeds are a little bit heavier duty, because if you blow real hard on these harmonicas, you can blow the reeds out. But in a lot of situations, it might not even make any difference. You might even sound better. So just be aware of the fact that you don't want to be blowing reeds out, okay? And where am I at? Yeah, a lot of times those birds pray they'll be, a, I've seen them out there a couple hundred yards from me, whatever, flying over some of the valleys up here in the mountains, and they'll make this long, piercing sound, a lot longer than what I'm doing, like that. And so, my old thing is just to go out in the woods, I don't care if it's squirrels or whatever, I see, I hear a little activity out there, and I'll just start blowing these harps. And, and try to mimic the animal, and next thing you know, you got you, you got quite a few animals around you, believe it or not, you know. So, but anyway, my point being, I'm a little off track here. I just thought I'd put out caution, a cautionary, some cautionary words here about those bull elk. You don't want to get one so steamed up that you get pinned to the ground. You just don't, but, you know... Chances are you're probably going to give up on the bugle before the elk even gets to you anyway. So, yeah, okay. Well, I'm coming up here on eight minutes, ladies and gentlemen. That's enough for this video. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, maybe I can put this subject to rest. Adios, my friends. Happy New Year and all that fun stuff.